The Master Chief is dead. His file reads, missing in action. Catherine. Spartans never die. Your mistake is seeing Spartans as military hardware. My Spartans are humanity's next step. Our destiny as a species. Do not underestimate them. But most of all, do not underestimate him. Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at my favorite first-person shooters of all time, Halo 4. Back when the Microsoft Xbox first arrived on the scene, there was very little to compare the larger-than-life console to, as their only exclusive game was Halo. This was the first time that first-person shooters were harder on the controllers that for the PC as the keyboard and mouse was king. I could never compete, thus never got into shooters like that on consoles. Then some guy asked if I was interested in the Xbox at GameStop, and I said I'm not really into shooters like on PC. He said he was the same way, and that's how he felt until he played Halo, and the controls changed him for good. I took his recommendation to heart, and when the first price drop happened, I got myself an Xbox. My experience with Halo was correct in the beginning. I completely sucked. But with the investment I just made, I had to see this project through. I kept playing and kept getting used to the second analog for the camera and the crazy warthog controls. Finally, somewhere in between, it just clicked. Not to say that I'm ready to play competitively where I still would get slaughtered. But now, I was able to play Call of Duty and other first-person games online and truly enjoy myself. I still hate first-person RPGs, but at this point, I'm willing. I followed the Halo series all the way to the climatic end with Halo 3 under developer Bungie. I felt it was a bittersweet moment as there was more in the tank for the Master Chief. Then, 343 Industries took over with the next installment to push the Xbox 360 to its absolute limits. Halo 4 was developed by 343 Industries and released by Microsoft Game Studios in 2012 and later released as part of the Master Chief Collection in 2014 for the Xbox One. It was finally released for the Microsoft Windows in 2020. The game has now upscaled to 4K and up to 120 frames per second for the Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Xbox Series X and S. Cortana, Using my backwards compatibility on Halo 4 disc for my 360, I was able to tap into my favorite shooters of all time once again to see if the updates were worth it. The visuals are stunning as the original ran at 720p and really pushed the 360 as if it were the next gen game at the time. Everything just seems cleaner and smoother. The game ran great already but now no screen tears, smooth like butter, extremely clear, and feels great overall. I'm only able to view 60 frames per second due to my monitor, but the game still runs as smooth as soap with barely any load times at all. I'm also only able to capture at 1080p as of right now, so the image you see is downscaled from 4K, but due to the designs of the game that it originally employed makes this game still fantastic to look at. The action sees major improvements going from 30 to 60 as it is easier to determine your surroundings as you fight and explore. The action is non-stop and is able to stay that way with no stuttering or gameplay slowdown or flicker on screen. Everything just looks like there was a top layer of junk that has been lifted and sped up quite a bit. Halo 4 is already a terrific game with its fantastic campaign and top notch visuals and fantastic gameplay. Even without the update, the game still holds its own. I would highly recommend a revisit, especially now with the advanced updates, to see the Master Chief in all his glory taking down whoever threatens Earth. That's it for me on this episode on our Take Two look at Halo 4. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and great. Take us out of here, and I will see you all next upload.
Pelican 9-6, sir. We found him. 